What is going on, y'all? This is my first ever YouTube video. I finally decided, you know what? I have nothing else better to do at 2 o'clock in the morning. Let's go for it. So I'm a kind of a night owl anyway, and I was just thinking, I was like, you know what? I need to kind of show off my my vest from Safe Life Defense. Uh, I think it's something really cool that pretty much everybody should at least consider. I just happened to elect to purchase the uniform shirt carrier in black. It came with a custom name tag and everything. Um, but it's a really, really nifty piece of gear. And I think, I think everyone should kind of know my thoughts on it. And, and uh, I have a bit of, I, I have quite a few, th you know, praises to give towards Safe Life Defense. They did a pretty good job. But I also have some constructive criticism is what I'll call it. And I'll get into that further on in the video. But first of all, I want to show you what I have kind of put together my philosophy on what, some of the reasons why I have put it this way. So I'm a right-handed shooter. I work part-time security. Uh, I used to work full-time. I'm doing some other things right now. But anyway, um, so if you'll notice, notice on your right, which is right here on the left side of the vest, okay? I have my radio pouch with my Beofang radio. The radios that I use at work, luckily we have the Kenwood, uh, the Kenwood radio connectors. The Beofang radios take the Kenwood connectors, which is great. So it was kind of funny that I already had it and all I did was when I go to work, I swap out my Beofang for the work radio and go into my work mic. It's just a generic, uh, I don't know, I don't know anything about this company, but they make a pretty great mic. I've had a couple other mics before. They were cheap ones from China and they they acted like cheap ones from China. This one may be ch from China, but it's a more, <laughs> it's a high quality one. But anyway has a little uh, mic loop right here. A lot of guys will hook them on their epaulets. Uh, I chose to take, you have removable, you have the option, you know, they give you epaulets. Uh, so I just decided to take mine off. They're always getting snagged on stuff and looking kind of funky. If I ever need to wear them for any sort of reason, some guys wear like color-coded things, you know, loops that they put on the epaulets, you know, for whatever, you know, a lot of times that's because of department regulations or, you know, security company, if it's like a supervisor or anything. But anyway, you guys, a lot of you guys already know that type of stuff. Uh, but they are removable. They Velcro in. The uh, shoulder straps, you know, they're okay. Uh, but I will say the vest is pretty damn comfortable. The, uh, the vest has a air mesh material. All throughout inside of it so it breathes pretty well um, it's definitely one of the cooler you know cooler feeling vests that I've worn I've worn some other ones so it's and people have said that it is the most comfortable vest on the market that may be so because I haven't worn just a bunch of vests so they may be right now they have a bunch of aftermarket things that you can put in from other companies like ice plate or uh, uh, there's another one where they have like you it's kind of like a pontoon where it has channels air channels that you kind of inflate and you know it takes the body armor off of your off of your body and allows the inner you know allows you to breathe between the vest and it's great I haven't tried any of that stuff and uh, I plan on getting some of that but I'm still looking for the right one. Anyway, going back to the vest, as far as the features of it, um, the stitching is great. Uh, I like that they chose, some guys don't like the, uh, the uh, pleats that they have running down the whole, you know, the whole length of the, of the vest. I kind of like it just because, you know, it looks more uniform-ish, you know, 
kind of has, I don't know. I kind of like the look at it. Uh, I could go with or without. Uh, I wish Safe Life Defense had more options as far as the exact cut. Like, I could do with a different style pocket. I don't quite like this one. It's kind of growing on me, but I don't quite like this one too much. I like it more of the traditional, you know, kind of like inverted chevron type deal. You know, possibly with a just a square bottom, you know, because it's easier to get other things and more appropriate shaped things down at the bottom. I do like this, you know, with the, with the, I guess, I can't remember what it's called. It's a gusset or pleat or whatever you want to, you guys know what I'm talking about. But allows it to expand out just a touch, you know, if you, if you need to put something a bit bulkier in there. But, you know, if they had it going like this, you know, that, that would be my favorite look to it, but I'm just kind of nitpicking. I like that they include these little buttons. They're just sewn on, you know, and they are sewn on right over a bar tack to make it look like, you know, they've got buttonholes, which is cool. It's a nice little touch. I could go either way, but I mean, I will say it gives it more of a dressy look. Um, I wouldn't suggest trying to take off these buttons if you're not wanting to, if, you know, if you want to take them off, I wouldn't suggest doing that because uh, if you take those off, you'd be like, okay, what are these bar tacks here? What are those there for? You know, it would look kind of strange. It looks good like this. Um, now, first gripe, okay? My first gripe, uh, or second gripe, excuse me. <laughs> second gripe is this. It's okay, but that Velcro, you see how small that is? That's not gonna last long. And plus this this hook Velcro, I can already tell it's starting to kind of fail. And I haven't, you know, I haven't been messing with it. But I guess they don't want to put too much Velcro because it'll pull on the material, possibly. Uh, that's another gripe, third gripe. Uh, as far as the material that it's made out of, it's made out of a, like a 600 denier uh, polyester. Which, polyester is okay for a number of things, more for clothing, but I know this is kind of considered a slightly clothing-ish article, but I really believe that all, you know, anything related to body armor should have a better material, you know, anything related to police work, tactical, you know, security, all that stuff, I think it should be made out of nylon. Uh, like 500 dean or nylon or they've got some nylon out now that can be laser cut and you don't have to reinforce it and it just nylon held, holds up a lot better to sunlight polyester will age very quickly i've had several polyester things i've learned through trial and error polyester doesn't last a long time there are some vests out there that are nylon and they will last longer than this but since I was working indoors a lot and I wasn't doing a bunch of crazy stuff like police, you know, I'm just a security officer. I have gotten into some scuffles, but really, you know, it could go either way, but I really, I'm kind of a, kind of a gear nut and I know what materials are good because not only of research, personal research that I've done, but just my own personal experience with this material has been pretty negative with other products in the past not related one bit to safe life defense okay so this they may be you know this may be a better version of what i've dealt with before but i just i haven't had very good luck with this stuff all the time anyway going back to the positives of the vest i love that they put the molly you have the option to put the molly on there or take it off or, and then you have like two little uh Slip pockets they can, you know, put whatever else in. Um, I like it with the Molly. Plus, you know, I'm able to wear it. Some some companies, corporations, or depart, you know, police departments, or whatever agency you may be working for, they may not let you wear, you know, something with overt magazine pouches or anything like that. You know, anything that's Molly on the vest. You know, you have to keep it all on the belt line. Luckily, my companies that I've worked for allow me to wear things on the vest. So it reduces the weight off of my hips 
you know, from using a heavy belt. Not to mention it's a lot easier to take on and off in the bathroom, okay? Let's let's be real here, guys. So, um, anybody that gives you gripes, you know, about that, don't pay mind to it. It really, you know, it doesn't look any more scary than a cop with a fully loaded up belt. I mean, or a security officer. So, if you're worried about that, then yeah, go ahead and, you know, get the uniform carrier without the molly on it. Or just choose not to put pouches on if your department tells you not to, whatever. Okay? But anyway, um, I've got my Streamlight. It's USB rechargeable. I can't remember the exact model. You guys can let me know in the comment section. Um, you can kind of see, let's see if it'll focus. Yeah, it's a micro, micro stream USB. All right, great little nifty light. Uh, this is my backup light or just light to do little tiny tasks. You know, I like it that it has the, the reversible clip. You can put it either way so I can put it on a ball cap if I'm wearing one or, you know, if I need to, if, if I need to have my epaulets, I can put them on there and clip this on, you know, on top real quick. I have my little, uh, Oh shoot, what is it? Oh, it's the it's the right in the rain space, you know, Fisher space pan, really neat, black anodized, you know, flat or matte look. Good little pen. Um, interchangeable cartridges and stuff. Now, going back to the pockets, they have these little velcro velcro things right here where you can access the pockets from either side. And uh, that's okay. I don't really find myself using it much. Now, if, you know, you have a specific, you know, personal defense uh, tool or whatever you want to call it, you can probably, you know, put it through there and, you know, or whatever else. Um, these pockets are kind of small. I understand that they have to have it for, you know, different size bodies. You know, for, they don't want to have a specific, you know pocket for each individual vest or whatever so I get it but I was able to find these uh, right in the rain notebooks packet of three so I keep a couple in here you know I have to keep notes sometimes uh, depending on what it is uh, they like to they like to have you uh, you know have books that can't have pages torn out easily like the spiral notebooks but I'm a lefty so Whenever I'm writing a freaking report or jotting down jotting down notes, I always tend to smudge because, you know, of the different pages and it just it gets annoying. You know, I wish I could go back to my spiral notebook. I even once had my spiral notebook, I cut cut off like a eighteenth of an inch or something just so I could stuff it down there, but the pocket never quite closed any you know, that well and I didn't want to cut off any more, so I just bit the bullet and uh, you know, got those little books. They're okay. Um, Safe Life Defense, if you're listening, you know, if you could find a way to make the pockets a little, just an eighth of an inch longer or wider or something, that would help out a lot. I think a lot of guys would be happy about that. Now that you have a hidden pocket right here, Velcro's okay. I can already tell that it's starting to, you know, kind of age a little, but it's fine. I have, I'm not, I don't really get into it a bunch. Now I see a lot of guys, they'll put their phone in here or, you know, maybe they attach their, you know, their body cam a certain way using this or if they have a concealed blade or whatever. That's good. Uh, I just, I just have a couple of gloves for pat downs or, or in, you know, handling sensitive things. I don't like, I don't like getting, you know, weird diseases. So, um, I have my, I have a lot of 511 pouches right here. These things are great. Uh, they're made out of a, I can't remember if they're, five, I think they're 500 denier nylon, um, quality pouches, not the most high speed things in the world. A lot of 511 guys will be like, what? 
not the most high speed and high speed thing in the world. Yeah, I know you're. I like 511 too, but let's be real here, guys. It's not all about that. But anyway, a couple Smith and Wessons in here. Some some companies will get finicky in security, whether or not you can carry cuffs. You know, cuffs are re only reserved for you know police. I just carry them. If I'm told to take them out, I'll just take them out. It doesn't really bother me if it's empty. I mean, shoot, they give us flex cuffs anyway if they're going to, you know, if they're going to let us do anything, which I think that's kind of ridiculous. But the flex cuffs are lighter. I will say that. Now, I've got uh, North American Rescue trauma shears. Great little things. Have them just kind of stuck behind the two rows of Molly right here does a good job. Uh, I don't ever have problems with it popping out because it sits low enough and there's nothing messing with it. So, uh, now if you notice, this is a Gen 7 cat tourniquet from North American Rescue. I can even show you if it'll let me. Yeah, it is the cat tourniquet. Um, I decided to take off the time, you know, the time Velcro strap, um, I felt that it being put to the side or over, I never liked it either way, you know, over or put to the side, you know, to deploy it faster so you can manipulate the windlass. I just decided to take it off. The uh, adhesive that they use to put the Velcro on, it's it's strong enough to keep it on there for the majority of the time, but, I mean, it doesn't ruin the thing if you take it off. It's perfectly functional, so I just decided to do this. I like it because it doesn't distract you, you know, you don't see this gray piece, or if you're running one of the, you know, earlier generation cat turner kits, you know, you got white, and it's like, whoa, what is that, you know? So that's just a little little thing that I did, just a mod. It doesn't ruin the integrity of the tourniquet at all. Now people are going to be like, well, what about the time thing? Well, that's what Sharpies are for, you know? Write it on something else. Write it on an article of clothing that's close to the tourniquet, or, you know, write it on their forehead, whatever, you know? I just have this on here for myself. If I have to do self-application, it's ready and accessible, okay? Um, I may not be using this, hopefully... I hope to God I don't have to use this on somebody or myself, okay? Or any of this equipment, right? Um, going on to this pouch right here. This pouch is also from 511. And it is their flashbang pouch. Now, I thought, when I was looking at it, I was looking at, you know, all the different pouches that I was looking at online. Or, you know, in my you know, local law enforcement store, they were just, the first aid equipment was just too bulky for my, for my taste. Now, for some people, they may need to carry a, a larger, a larger first aid kit. But this is, this is actually not, I kind of spoke wrong. This is a, ble uh, this is a blowout kit, okay? It's just got an Israeli bandage. I have North American Rescue bandages, if you guys are wondering. Yes, I do. I just chose to run the North the uh, Israeli bandage because it's a gray package, and it, you know, the green for the North American Rescue ones just kind of look weird, in my opinion. Either one's fine, you know. Either, either bandage will do just fine. It'll help anybody, okay? Got a Sharpie. Got things, um, uh, bungee, uh, I just got a couple of rubber bands in here. I've got gloves. So when I pull this kit out, I have everything. I have a nasal pharyngeal airway tucked in there and a uh, uh, the decompression chest decompression needle. Uh, I keep it in there. I'm not trained with the chest decompression needle. Now, the reason why I do carry it is just in case it is needed and there just so happens to be a trained paramedic nearby that's trained with those things, I have it for them, okay? Like I said, hopefully I will never have to use this equipment, all right? 
um, going over to my magazine pouch. This is also from 511, okay? Cool thing, one of the very few pouches that I've seen on the market with Molly, especially for a pistol mag pouch. Two, co two rows of Molly. Good job, 511, okay? Sometimes you may need to mount something on the front, okay? I also mounted my radio sideways, and it's, it's thin enough that it doesn't really affect anything. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't even come out as far as this thing, as this multi-tool holder right here. So uh, they have it to where you can, there's a little, it's slightly smaller than, uh, thinner than one inch, but I was able to kind of stuff the, the strap with this, uh, with this pouch and weave it through. I was able to kind of manhandle it, use these pliers funny enough to get it in and it, it works. It's stable and it doesn't flop around. And, uh, you know, when I initially bought this vest, I was like, where am I going to put my radio? Am I going to really have to put it on my belt line? And I got to thinking, there we go. We have some Molly on this side. So that, that was a godsend right there. So you might be wondering, what is this Leatherman inside? What is this thing that this Leatherman is inside? Well, it's from a company uh, called Ray, or I don't know if it's pronounced Ray Gear or R-A-E Gear. It's literally R-A-E, three letters, like some sort of, you know, alphabet soup organization. But Ray Gear, I just call it that. And check that out. I have this OHT Leatherman. I got it because I wanted it one-handed at uh, opening. Sometimes you need that, okay? I've been in some scenarios where I do need that, okay? It's spring-loaded. But anyway, this little thing is uh, metal, and it's coated with some sort of black kind of texturized coating and it does a good job it holds up pretty well it doesn't really scuff up real easy I've taken this you can see how many times I've taken this multi-tool in and out and it's holding up pretty good uh, this is meant for this particular piece of gear is meant for two inch wide belts now it doesn't do too well on Molly but luckily this uh, double pistol mag pouch has elastic so I kind of put the thing between the two layers of elastic and it's a bit longer but I was able to secure it with a bungee and it stays it doesn't move at all I've had no issues with it coming off so that was something really cool that I found um, so I one thing that I really love about these 511 pouches is these uh, how they lash on the molly it's their own their own patented system and uh, you undo the snaps at the bottom you know you can't see them because of the you know the camera but uh you undo the snaps at the bottom and then you pull these tabs up and they come off really quickly but it's a convenient spot to kind of route my my cable through for for my mic and i just have a uh funny enough i use the very bungee that came with the double pistol mag pouch. Uh, it has two bungees that come with it. And you can, you know, I chose not to put the bungees on top. They also have it, I have the flaps tucked down inside. Uh, they have some Velcro tabs, and I didn't really like that. I like keep, you know, I'm not rolling around a bunch. There's enough tension on these magazines to where they're not coming out. These are Glock magazines, by the way. But moving on. It's a great vest. Um, they do have op an option where you can put uh, a side panel on, you know, in case you want, because there's a bit of space between here with my sizing, and you would be able to kind of cover up that spot with more ballistic material. But I plan on losing, I plan on losing some weight, you know, to reduce that, you know, that gap. I actually kind of I made sure that I bought this thing, you know, for my size and body weight. Kind of slightly small, but it still fits me just fine. So this, uh, on the back, one thing that I wish 
Safe Life Defense would have put on was uh, a Velcro panel. It, like, make it optional. If you don't want anything on the back, then don't, you know, put an option in the website to not have anything on the back. But uh, I wish there was a dedicated Velcro panel or some sort of panel that you can put on here that's, you know, depending on your department or, you know, city or if you're, you know, working security or company or just put security on there or officer or whatever. You know, they have a lot of those options for the other vests. I was kind of surprised that they didn't have that option for the Safe Life Defense vest, uh, for the uniform vest from Safe Life Defense. Uh, I don't know if that was an oversight or they just chose, hey, you know, we'll just let them do whatever they want, you know, have them take it to their se local seamstress and, you know, have a specific patch made up. But Safe Life Defense has... Uh, Patches or yeah, patches that are uh, panels where you can buy straight from their website. They're custom, and you can probably get some loop Velcro and have your local seamstress, you know, put the patch panel on the back here. So, you know, it is what it is, but it's just an extra cost, and so I guess maybe they're like, hey, it's really not worth it for to for us to have to have a custom you know, custom option on the back that just cost too much or take too much time for us. So, you know, maybe have to, you know, maybe we would have to stock a bunch of ones, you know, like half and half, you know, without Velcro or with Velcro. And then all of a sudden we have ones that are with Velcro or not enough with without Velcro or something. So I get why they might have done that. You know, the whole, the whole, uh, patch right here you know i think that's pretty smart but uh this thing is really cool um not perfect but i do love it it's pretty close pretty close to perfect the uh ballistic rating on this vest is what i could find was the best out there um so kudos for safe light defense for putting out a fairly affordable product um i bought this over the 2019 Black Friday sale. Uh, the cool thing you can do uh, with Safe Life Defense is they they offer it to where you can split it up into four payments. And when you make your first payment, you know as soon as that goes through, they ship you your vest. So you don't have to wait till after four payments, then we ship you your vest or whatever. Uh, so. That was great. I could pay it off at my own pace, uh, almost. It was like, I can't remember the exact spacing, but it's it's spaced far enough apart where it's doable for the majority of people, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you have just barely enough to make the minimum payment. Yeah, definitely do this. If, if, if you need body armor, don't waste another second in investing in, in your life because this is an important piece of gear and you know you don't have to get it as fancy as mine uh luckily the sale that they were doing they just happened to offer the concealable carrier for for the armor along with it a black concealable carrier i guess they probably had some extra ones in stock and they're like hey let's throw this in with the black friday deal so i went ahead and did it i like having the option if i want to have a more concealable, low-profile vest. You know, if there's a company that I end up working for in the in the future where I can't wear an overt carrier like this or I have to, you know, just kind of bear it and grin and then, you know, have to wear a concealable vest underneath a uniform shirt. That sucks. I've done it. It's not fun. All you guys out there who have to do it, believe me, I, I'm right there with you. I understand. I feel for you. I'm, I'm hoping that you are able to petition to get those things, you know, to trade those things in for something like this, because this is so much easier to deal with than a concealable vest. Oh my gosh, the riding up and the, and the freaking, uh, rashes that come from it. You know, you do your best to keep it clean, but it never, you know, things build up. I work in Texas, so the summers are freaking unbearable enough and you are making us wear concealable vests? No, thank you. Uh, so I'm glad I have 
this overt carrier. It looks enough like a uniform to where nobody really bats an eye. They don't think, oh my gosh, he's wearing a tactical vest. You know, what is this, a police state? No, it's just, you know, it's it's a uniform vest with with practical things put on it. I'm so glad that I am able to do this, get it off my belt line. So, um, I do my best not to put anything on my belt line except for my, you know, for my sidearm, and that's it. That's that's really it as far as my belt. Now, I may elect sometimes if I'm, you know, in that one scenario, I do have a mag holder, a Kydex mag holder that I can quickly put on my belt, and I have two extra mags, so that way I, I'm, I have five magazines total for my for my uh dispatcher so um you know you may have the need maybe you want to put your first aid kit you know on your belt line or maybe in your cargo pocket if you have one or whatever you know if it's a little tiny cargo pocket kit i used to do that a lot but i felt that it was always best to have it you know more easily accessible right on top of you but you could probably swap this out for you know some sort of uh taser or stun gun taser brand name you guys know what i'm talking about you know with the kydex thing and you know you could probably swap that out and but this is just how i set up my vest to meet my needs and i think it's pretty slick so uh, I may add some sort of red tab. I did have some Velcro on here, but I took the Velcro off, you know, and I had a, you know, big, gigantic first aid thing, and it just kind of looked goofy, like some sort of kid. Hey, I have a first aid kit. No, I, I just, I kind of got over that real quick <laughs> and took it off. So I may put more like a red tab, you know, loop it through, the, you know, through this, or maybe sew it on. I don't know but something more low profile to where it doesn't detract, you know, from, you know, I want to not have a bunch of bright colors besides this and, you know, when I have my name tag on there, I want them to see this and have it clean. I don't want it, you know, I think I pretty did a pretty good job of keeping this kind of clean and not making it all cluttered. You know, I think it looks, you know, I think it looks very professional, looks well thought out. And, you know, if you want to say it, high speed, low drag, whatever. <laughs> if you want to get all technical and, and tactical, I think it is cool. I will say, I think this is a kind of a tactical thing. But hey, you know, it comes down to how you interact with people. This stuff, all these things are just tools. You know, physical tools. Learn how to talk with people. Learn how to deal with people on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, if you are one of those guys who knows how to talk with people and, you know, diffuse situations or whatever and, and you're a peacemaker, good on you. Don't fear wearing something like this. Okay? This, this is gear. This is not, you know, going to war. This is your life that you're dealing with. So... This is how I've gone about doing it. I'm not telling anybody, you know, hey, you need to do it this, this, and this way. I'm no expert. But I've had enough experience to know what works for me. So figure out what your needs are. And, you know, if you need something like this, don't wait. Get it. You know, if you have the means. Uh, don't waste another day if you have the means to get it. Don't procrastinate because when I was first working in security, I was, luckily, I was given a hand-me-down vest for my cousin who used to work security himself. But it was one of the old, you know, like, it was, I guarantee you it was like 15 years old or something like that, possibly even older, like almost as old as I am. I'm 25. So it was a level two vest. And that thing was uncomfortable. It was a it was a concealable carrier and it never fit right. Not only that, level two, if you know anything about body armor, 
you know, level two body armor is really, you know, you're kind of pushing the envelope on how many types of calibers you can, you will be able to see on the, you know, on the streets or wherever else. Okay. Uh, it would barely stop pistol rounds. And I had this one instance where this guy pulled out a rifle. It was a, uh, I don't know if it was a Armalite rifle or if it was a Soviet block AKM style rifle, whatever else, but it was a rifle nonetheless. Okay. He pulled it out of his vehicle. He had two buddies with, with pistols. Luckily, we were able to defuse the situation without exchanging rounds, but uh, I didn't. I was working unarmed security at the time before I had my uh, license, you know, my commission license, which allows me to carry a firearm. So I'm so glad I didn't have to worry about that. You know, I'm glad I had a, a vest, but it wasn't rated for a rifle, and this isn't even rated for a rifle, but. That aside, I plan on getting the flexible rifle armor system that Safe Life Defense just, you know, just put out. So I'm saving up for that and plan on getting it. And hopefully, and it's a bit bulkier than the level 3 plus, but, you know, it'll still look good and presentable. So definitely look at that, guys, if you're interested. I'm not telling you it's the best thing in the world. There may be something that comes along that's better. Or maybe Safe Life Defense updates their design. But this is the current, you know, uh, current iteration. You know, this is the, f uh, like, the second wave of vests that they've put out. It's the exact same as the original, you know, wave of vests. And as far as the, the, f the carriers. So, uh... Hopefully, this is kind of subject to change, and they'll make changes to this thing that are for the better, uh, possibly with the material, like I touched on earlier on in the video. So, I would not say, hey, I don't want to get this because the materials are not the greatest. No, it's it has a professional look. I was willing to deal with my little, my little problems with it, okay? And that's just my opinion that they could have used better materials. Um, but, you know, maybe it's designed for the guys that are not having to worry about that. Maybe this is, you know, uh, it is geared towards law enforcement and all kinds of other agencies and as well as security. So I would assume that they are taking notes on their feedback on what types of material that they should offer in the future. So this is kind of my take on it. This video is already 38 minutes long, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I should add this or that. Uh, I kind of like it the way it is, but, you know, tell me what you think. I'm a pretty easy guy to get along with. I'll listen to reason. You know, don't, don't go in there and say, hey, you know, looks like crap or, you know, you're not thinking it out right yeah you, know, you know it is what it is you know everybody has their own needs yours may be a lot different than mine so anyway take care y'all and be safe out there